you are about to buy your first ever e-mountain bike. And why not? They can take the sting out of climbs and get you to places like this just a little bit easier. Entry-level e-bikes, hub drive versus mid-drive. What exactly can you get for your money? So here then are three typical examples of entry-level e-bikes. Starting off with the Cyclomatic, the supermarket bike with rear hub drive, about 500 pounds. The slightly more expensive Focus, also with rear hub drive, around about 1500. And then the high bike with the mid-drive motor from 1500 pounds onwards. So what is the difference then between a hub drive and a mid drive? Well, the hub drive is located either in the front or rear of the bike, or as the mid drive is located centrally. Now there's gonna be a difference in weight distribution between the hub drives and the mid drives, and the mid drive has a more centralized balance feel to it. So starting off then with a supermarket style of bike, a little bit like this one, uh, quite likely it's gonna be heavier than all the other bikes, uh, but at least it's got a side stand on it. Uh, in terms of the motor, looking at a 250 watt rear hub drive motor with a battery which quite likely will be external and around about 250 watt hours. Componentry then, it's going to be less expensive than on some of the other bikes. You're looking at such things as cable operated brakes rather than hydraulic ones. There should be at least three levels of assist uh, on the motor. And the fork, well, it'll quite likely be more of a spring than anything uh, very refined. The tires, quite likely, will be street style, and the wheels, probably 26 inch. Uh, but the most important thing, if you buy in a supermarket style bike, is quite likely only gonna come in one size. So this also is a rear hub drive style e-bike, slightly more refined than the supermarket style bike. It's got a 250 watt motor in the rear wheel, combined with a 250 watt hour battery, which could be internally mounted or maybe external. Let's take a look at the details and the componentry of this bike then. You've got a slightly better switch unit with different power modes available. You've got some decent hydraulic brakes, which are gonna stop you a lot better than the cable activated system. Also, the wheels are a lot better for off-road. You've got knobbly tires and a stronger wheel. And topping it off, you've got a decent quality suspension fork, which is actually gonna take the sting out of riding those big hits out on the trails. And lastly, let's take a look at the frame. It's gonna be available in a lot of different sizes for different rider heights. It might also come in a few different color options too. And finally, an example of a mid-drive motor e-bike, which is gonna give you a more balanced ride dynamic because of that centrally located motor. The componentry is gonna be better than on the other bikes. Sizing, you can have a range of sizing for different rider heights. Might well come in a range of colors, but critically, that battery is gonna be larger capacity. It's 400 watt hours on this, which is gonna improve the range of your e-bike. And that motor, the performance, is gonna be improved when it comes to climbing, as we'll find out later. So, but essentially then, what we have here is a transition from an e-bike up to an e-mountain bike. Now, the e-bike has become incredibly popular in recent years. It's made for commuting and light off-road use, whereas the e-mountain bike has better componentry and can handle those off-road conditions. This then could be the type of place where you do your first ever e-mountain bike ride. We're in the Forest of Dean. It's got a series of waymark trails from easy through to moderate and on to slightly more difficult. Now, before we came here, we actually went to North Wales to one of the UK's oldest trail centers, Coy de Brennan, to actually see what these bikes are capable of. Yeah, we kick things off with a fire road challenge. So we're on a smooth fire road climb. No, no, we're not. We're on a long, smooth fire road climb, Chris. Yeah, but this is the sort of thing that'd really grind you on a standard mountain bike, but I'm simply breezing up here with minimum effort. That's amazing. What, what mode are you in? I'm in eco mode. I'm in high power mode. And that's the good thing about, you know, spending a little bit more money is you've got four different modes on this bike compared to two or three or that, right? Uh -huh. And you stick your bike into eco power mode. Let's try it. Oh. So there you can see, I'm now an eco. Chris is an eco. And this bike's got a little bit more power. Wait for However, me. Let's try the bikes in high power mode, Chris. Yeah. So okay, we're I'm, in. I'm now in high power. High power. So you can see that's where the mid drive comes into its own.
Well, great days in North Wales. I think it proved that uh, those type of trails were good, not just for the high bike, but yeah. also the supermarket bike as well. Yeah, everything we did that day was totally within the limits of these bikes, for sure. Until we got to the technical oh, climb. Yeah, yeah. So behind this here is an advanced style technical climb, something you might not necessarily tackle on a standard mountain bike. But here on the e-bikes today, we're going to tackle them in the easiest gear and the highest power mode. First up, Steve, you ready? Yeah, here we go. So I'm about to tackle a climb. I've got the seat up. Obviously, it's not just about the motor when you go to uh, more advanced trails. It's about the componentry too, such as the tyres. And there's more of a city style tyre on this bike, so it might not be as strong as possibly the Focus or the high bike, but let's give it a go. Go on, okay, Steve. Ready? You got this. Here we go. Oh, wow. Straight in. Look at that power. Oh, wow. Delivery. So Line good. choice. So good. Look at this. Go on, Steve. All the way. Uh, I think that's about it for the cyclomatic. Chris, are you going to get on the Focus? We're in the highest power mode. I think, yep, highest power mode, easiest gear. Let's give this a go. In the saddle, Steve Jones technique first, I think. Oh, it's quite smooth, it's quite powerful. Just get out the saddle a bit more. Power delivery, bit of tire choice. Not a lot of grip coming, Steve, from these uh, tires. Now this is actually quite a short section of trail. And typically, if you're out and about in the hills, you'll probably be doing more extended versions of this trail, as you can see, I've actually breezed up that section and then it actually enables you to go quite easily a really a pretty technical trails. It's pretty amazing that. Breezed it. <laughs> so Steve, that looks super easy on the high bike. For me, I think the pluses and minuses for this bike was that it simply breezed up the track when it was super smooth. Power delivery felt really good, but as soon as it get got a bit more technical. I could feel the rear, you know, the rear wheel weight of that hub motor just like pulling the bike back on the I, steps. I think also when, once it started getting a little bit steeper, I mm -hmm. could see you putting more effort yeah, into it. Yeah. And it was the same on the cyclomatic. It's uh -huh. okay up to a certain gradient, yeah. and then you get past that gradient, and mm -hmm. these motors really do start yeah. to struggle. Definitely. However, yeah. this is where the high bike with the mid-drive motor, this is where mid-drive motor e-bikes are simply in a class of their own. Yeah. Uh, not only do they make, uh, do, they, do they conquer those steeper climbs, but also they enable you to sustain a longer climb on your e-bike. Yeah. So, you know, as I say, I was in high power mode on this bike, and um, I was actually able to sit down and get up that mm -hmm. climb pretty easily. Yeah, I noticed to deliver the power, I had to stand up out of the saddle, hence losing grip with the back tire, the tires as well, as well being a bit skinnier, couldn't get, provide the grip that the bigger tires yeah. could as well. Jones, we never did any actual time climbs on these bikes. Let's get a stopwatch out. Heads or tails? Heads. Heads it is. I'll go first. Let's see it. I don't think it's timed actually. Let's see how far. I didn't think you even could get up these banks on those bikes, surely. Okay, so first up, we've got the hub drived E mountain bike. I'm in the easiest gear, I'm in the maximum power mode. Count me in, Chris. Three, two, one, go. Oh, a bit of a slow start, good line choice. Got to make sure he's got a load of grip on these kind of mountain bikey tires, but they're pretty skinny. Pretty impressive, oh, out of the saddle. Oh, is that watch still running, Chris? Okay, up to the post. Oh, so I can now sit down again. Stop. 23 seconds, 0 0.50. So 23 and a half seconds. Okay, so I'm now on the mid-drive bike with the Yamaha PW motor. Chris, after you. Three, two, one. Look at that, just flying away up there. Actually roosting up this trail. So much difference in the uh, hub drive bike. Oh my God, it's absolutely gonna smash it. Stop. 16.82 seconds. So massively smashed now at the park. So absolutely smashed it then on the uh, high bike. Really? What was the time difference? Oh, my maths. Uh, you did 23 and a half seconds on the hub drive, 16.8 yeah. seconds on the mid drive. So about six or seven seconds then. Yeah. But I think the main point of that is you can actually sustain longer climbs yeah. on the mid drive bike. Yeah. Uh, you can sit down. But I think, as we saw on the technical climb, 
the mid-drive bike is far superior. Even the grip looked different. You could actually see you roosting your way up there rather than just working hard. Now, talking about grip, not only do we do hill climbs on these e-bikes, we also go down as well. Right. And I'm finding that the cable operated break, sorry guys, I'm a little bit out of breath on that, that climb, which proves that e-biking is a physical activity. Um, but yeah, I think it's time to do a braking test between cable operated and hydraulic. You're kidding me, what, down this skiddy chute? Yeah, after you, Chris. Probably see you at the van then. After you. So Chris, the challenge is you start from the post and when you get to this stump here, you put all the anchors on and you see how far it takes you to stop. So I've got to stop as best I can. Yeah. This side of London. This side of London. <laughs> this side of the car park, yeah? <laughs> right. I've this, I've got to see. <laughs> can't even walk up there. <laughs> now this could actually be the funniest thing you've ever seen. Chris on the cable operated bike with road tires. Oh my God. I got four fingers on my brakes now applying the pressure. So not one finger, four fingers. Right, you ready? Yeah. Let's get this. Oh my God, these He's brakes. He's not gonna stop. <laughs> Chris, you shouldn't really go skidding down trails. I know, skidding on the trails and bad. That's, ba that's bad, bad practice. But there's not a lot of grip on these trails, Steve. I haven't so got much else to not reckon, skid, to be fair. I reckon that took you about 80 yards to stop. And that was, as I say, four fingers on the brakes, pulling as hard as I could. Yeah. Just the modulation isn't there. As soon as you skid, you modulation. can't Modulation. Yeah, there's no modulation. The brakes, yeah, there is no modulation. On right. or off. Back up, get right. on the high bike. This is the second brake test. This is on the Focus, the rear hub drive style brake. We've got 160 mil hydraulic disc brakes on there, Shimano ones. So hopefully the stopping distances should be a lot less. Also got a slightly more aggressive tire. So it should help with grips and slowing down. Are you ready? Just two fingers on the brakes. That's ridiculous. It's massively different, isn't it? It's like a quarter of the time. Distance. So I guess it comes down to confidence, right? I think the grip on the tires makes a big, big difference, especially in the mud, as well as I've got just two fingers on these brakes rather than the four fingers trying to grip on that. You mean I've got a lot more grip because I've got more fingers on the bars. So this blue trail is actually perfect for these uh, entry-level bikes, Chris. Definitely, this is pretty smooth, but do you remember how technical and rough those trails were in North Wales? I did. So this is what happened when things got technical. That really was pretty rough, right? And probably not out of place on a World Cup circuit, but your supermarket style bike? Mm, pretty bad. I've just about managed to stick my elbows back into my skull. Definitely bounced me around. Hell of a lot going down there. But what, were the, what, were the, what was, what's, what's the problem with riding a supermarket style bike in a place like that? First up, the brakes, you know, the cable activator, to, uh, there's no power whatsoever on there and you really lack, you know, knocks your confidence massively because you can't slow down, especially when it gets tech and fast. Tires uh, as well, right? Tires are important tires, when you yeah. go mountain biking. Skinny little tires, 26 inch as well, so they don't roll over the big steps. You're just getting bounced around loads. The fork at the front is purely a cosmetic thing. It yes. literally bangs and clacks around. It doesn't offer no suspension. Expensive. So that's what, that's, that's the difference. When you go from a supermarket style bike to a more expensive bike, you're actually getting cushioning on that. Floor. Definitely. And I think with the battery as well, um, it literally was bouncing around in the carrier. It come loose a couple of times. And the weight of that rear hub motor drive, you know, bouncing around on those rock steps, it just isn't a nice experience at all. I think what, what brought it home to me is the fact when you, when you do buy your first e-mountain bike, it's important to get the right size for you. Yeah. So you, you're on a bike, which is literally a lot, a lot of those supermarket style bikes are only one size. Size, yeah, whereas style. the high bike I was riding mm -hmm. actually comes in a, in a range of sizes, yeah. which which you can get for that style of bike. The mid drive motor. When you've got a mid drive motor, there's a really there's a more balanced ride yeah. to the bike because it's located centrally, yeah. and all those things we talk about. It's worth spending that money to go mountain biking. You need such things as hydraulic brakes. Brakes make a massive difference. Though. You need grippy, aggressive tires, right, when you're riding a mountain bike. Yeah. When you go mountain biking, and that's the difference. I think supermarket style are good for fire roads and commuting. Yeah, yeah. Whereas when you go mountain biking. 
you grab the kit, right? Definitely. I tell you what, entry level or not, these bikes actually take the sting out of those quite boring fire climbs. And I reckon they can get you to places normal mountain bikes wouldn't. Yeah, I'd agree with that. But remember that really technical trail and Cody de Brennan on the supermarket bike? That <laughs> bike was definitely way out of its depths here. Yeah. But we're just approaching a blue graded trail where these bikes are definitely not feeling out of place. How much battery you got left, Chris? Uh, well, I've been in a high power mode and I've only used two bars of my 10 bars of battery. So yeah, I guess that's the great thing about having a mid-drive bike with a higher capacity battery. That's 400 watt hours. Yeah. I mean, I've got like two bars. I've probably got a couple of miles left, whereas you've got what, 20 mile left? So you've half a battery already. I know, it's crazy, huh? Well, I hope that's helped in guiding you through the often confusing world of e-mountain bikes and maybe encouraged you to take your first steps to your first e-bike purchase. Uh, Chris, for me, out on the trails, it was all about the mid-drive. Uh, more ability in technical terrain, uh, more range for the bigger bigger capacity battery, yeah. uh, more balance because the motor's located centrally. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I think the supermarket bike was perfectly acceptable for me on like the smooth stuff, the fire roads, sort of commuting based stuff. And it was an absolute blast to ride. But I think once you actually start mountain biking, you know, getting out in the woods and the mud and the rocks and things, it starts definitely getting out of its depth. Chris, I think what we're seeing here is a transition from the supermarket bike, which is essentially a towpath and commuting bike, yeah through to the mid-drive, the high bike which you're riding, which will actually probably open up so many opportunities for you to go ride in in different places you've never been before, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think you need to go along to a demo day. That way you can be able to try those different types of motors out, see what components suit you, and you know, see what style of bike even suits you. Exactly. And if you want to actually see what these bikes can do, if you check out the video which me and Chris did on the rock down here, and then for further field adventures into the wild, which uh, we did in Scotland. Yeah, don't forget you can subscribe to EMBM by clicking the globe in the middle of the screen. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. But do let us know your comments mm -hmm. on entry-level e-bikes. I'm sure you're going to have a load of them.